Welcome everyone. Welcome to a brand new year. It is 2022. And I know if you're like me, you're hoping this is going to be a banner year and you're hoping that wonderful things are going to happen and that we're going to see COVID going out the back door. Um, but I know we're all working together and I know we're all um, pitching and hoping that we can pull together and make this happen. We've already got 62 people in here. So tell me where you're from and use the chat and tell me, tell us your name and where you're from and um, just welcome. It's so nice to see everybody here today. As you're logging in, I want to let you know that I have a really good friend and a fellow geek with me today, Katie Anderson. Welcome, we're so glad to have you. And Katie and I have been friends for a long time. And if you've been in my UCLA class, you've heard her speak in my class sessions. And she does athletics. She's also very good at technology and computers and data and those kinds of things. So I knew she was the perfect person to join me today as we talk about things that we think about in the new year. I started offering some workshops and I'll talk about those at the end of today's session too. But the prompting of the workshop was reflect and reset. At the beginning of the year, our seniors are almost done. Um, we're thinking about, well, what do I want to do with my business? And one of the biggest things we can do is look at our overall business and our overall process and where we're at. And do we need, are there holes? Are there gaps? Are there things that you want to have done better? And so one of those big tools we all use is technology and in lots of different ways. So we wanted to just talk about how do you adopt new technology, add things into your quiver of tools, or maybe change things. So look, Katie, we've got people from New York. Uh, we've got Diane from Peachtree Corners, Fremont, Bainbridge Island. Oh my goodness, Boston, Trinidad. Sandra, glad to have you here. So just a, an amazing group of people. I'm so glad you decide to join me on a Friday morning or afternoon or night, depending on what it is. But um, so this is our very first Friday forum and I'm just, you can tell, I'm just very excited to be here. So Katie, thank you for joining me today and thank you for talking about technology and what that is for you. So how long have you been doing? Like, give us a little bit of a background about you and, and technology. Sure, sure. I, um, I started in technology actually right out of college, which I'm sure most of my family members would laugh about because I was terrified. My senior year in college, I had to take a computer uh, programming class and I was mortified to take it because I thought, oh, this is like, this is not me at all. And I took it my very last semester of college because I just wanted to avoid it. And my, uh, my official second job out of college was working for a computer software company in which I had to dive in deep with databases. I learned Microsoft Access kind of by accident, but um, I had to dig in deep on, on learning about databases. And the software company I was working for was a manufacturing automation software company. So it was not light on tech. Um, so I got, I, got a bit, <laughs> I got thrown into the deep end um, with that. And, and the funny thing is it actually, once I started working with technology, software, um, I ended up working with a web design here. I'm going to forward right now to, um, to a, to my kind of my bio that gives a little bit more information here. Um, yeah. So I, uh, I started working with web design agencies and I've, I worked both, uh, my husband's from Norway. So we were living in Oslo at the time. And I went to work for a company called Razorfish and was a project manager there. And what was great about being a project manager was I, I got to work with both sides of the house. I got to work as a salesperson, working with the client, understanding client needs, then translating those into a functional specification, and then going out to the graphic design department and the programmers and talking their language about what the, you know, what the client needs were. So it's fun. I've been working in this space for a long time. And then when I started up my college counseling business, it was kind of a natural fit for me to 
design my own website and then get into email marketing and social media and all of that. And um, so I, I feel like I have a lot of uh, background that helps me do my job better <laughs> in, in the college counseling world. Um, but I realize not everybody's coming from that perspective. So that's right. part of why we're talking about this today is that um, help meet you where you are and talk about what the possibilities are. And yeah, I'll show more about that in a, in a few minutes. Do you want to talk about your uh, background since you have sure. to go back a bit here? There we go. <laughs> I know. I just jumped you right in. I'm so, it's okay. I, uh, <laughs> I'm very good at that. As many of you know. So um, one thing that most of you may not know, and Katie and I were talking about this yesterday is that I'm, I'm a, uh, have the unusual distinction of have attended three colleges and I graduated from college within three years. So um, if you have any questions about transfer, what that's like, I've been there, done that. And I went to a women's college, a large public university and a small private co-ed university. So started out at the University of Colorado in Boulder, then transferred to William Woods, which was a women's college. My, hus my fiance at the time, later husband, was going to Westminster in Missouri and then we, um, he graduated and went to the University of Utah in computer science. So I transferred, I'd already been to the University of Utah. I did the big school thing. So I wanted to go to a smaller school. So I went to Westminster and graduated from Westminster as well, but that was the Utah one. So, so I, I had all three of those different experiences. And as a first generation student, that was a very eye-opening experience. So I have a BS in behavioral science. I've got my master's. You know, I've been working as a counselor and, you know, founded a technology company, teach for UCLA, and now I'm doing coaching, um, really enjoying that. Many of you have uh, reached out to me about that. I've been a, a strong advocate for professional development, um, so I've been a member of several professional organizations, WACAC, NACAC, HECA, IACA, and NCAG, and I'm currently a board member for NCAG. So, um, and the college planning software I've always used is first, you know, mycca.net, because that's the one we started. And then, of course, Guided Path, of, and, and currently still using Guided Path, which will become Maya Learning. Um, but I'm no longer affiliated with any technology company at all. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very... Um, excited to be able to take one hat off, so to speak, and focus on more of the counseling and the coaching. So, but that gives you a little bit of background. And, you know, that I have the distinct, um, I have the distinction of having attended three universities in three years. So <laughs> I don't know how many people have done that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Okay. So you can go, uh, go ahead and talk about the agenda for today and then we'll move on. Okay, so what we wanna do today is we're talking in general terms. So we wanted to give you some tools and some uh, framework to consider when moving to a technology platform, whether you're adopting a new technology and, and, and technology covers so many things in business now. And also um, if you're either moving, doing a new one or changing, and, and then tips from a power user. So that's Katie, that's your role is to share, you know, because you have a lot of knowledge and experience. If you have questions, we do have a question and answer um, section. So use the chat box to talk to each other, share thoughts, you know, exclamation, things like that. But if you have a question that you want to have addressed, please put it in the um, question and answer. And I'll put together a FAQ and I'll post it on my website, cindymcdonald.com. This recording will be posted there as well uh, so that you can uh, view it there. So that's what we're gonna do today. So we'll leave some time for questions at the end and um, try to make this uh, as interactive, but still productive for you as possible. So let's do a poll. We're going to check. So we want to know a little bit about you and kind of what your status is. And then you can also see from each other. So I'm going to launch a poll. There's four questions. As you finish one question, just go on to the next one. And so it, it should only just take a couple of minutes. So we're going to hit, I'm going to hit launch. So you should be seeing the, the survey on your screens. And if you select other, 
for one of the options, put in the chat what your other is, because I tried to cover as many options, but I know we all are unique and individual and often have things that we do differently. So looks like we're, people are, yeah. And, and if you, you know, just guess it's, this is a straw poll. It's just your impression. You may not know exactly what the numbers are, but um, give us a feeling, of, especially for number three on how you promote your business now. And uh, so, let's see. And then this is helpful because you'll be able to see where other people are. And Katie, I think that's one of the most valuable things about the Friday forums and the times that we all come together, especially during this pandemic, we've discovered we're not alone and we don't have to be alone. And we share a lot of things with other people. So, yeah, I've certainly enjoyed all these. Uh, well, the past couple of years, as we've all, a lot of us working from home, um, the networking that has gone on, uh, I really, really enjoy. I mean, I, we've, we've done a number of, um, uh, as we're just waiting for the numbers to come, you tell me when you're ready. But uh, we just our, our local IECA group here in Orange County, we've met out on my back porch. <laughs> You know, it's nice to see each other face to face uh, when it's possible outside. But, um, you know, I've, I've really I, I that's one thing that I miss is I, I miss the kind of that constant networking. I I really enjoyed all the co-counseling I've been doing with various counselors across the country, um, mm -hmm. being able to share together. And um, so hopefully this is one more. And I find that lately we've a lot of us have been talking about technology and it partly is because of new options that are available or just getting further in our business or wanting to grow in a different way or having to reevaluate things. And um, so I think it's, this is good timing. It's, it's January. <laughs> well, and yeah, you know, we're all setting new goals and, and, and we should be setting our business goals too. Right. And, and, and I think that sometimes that gets lost. You know, we focus on the counseling sometimes, but, but we are entrepreneurs where many of us are solopreneurs. So it's really important. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. I realize some people may not be able to answer the questions if they're on their phones or things like that, but I'm going to go ahead. If you, I'll give you, I'll count to three. So if you still need to answer, go ahead and do that. But one, two, three. Okay. All right. So that was amazing. Um, all right. So now I'm going to share the results. <clears throat> And let's see where we're at. So you all should be seeing this on your screen. It looks like we're pretty evenly divided in the different, um, how long you've been working as an IEC be, between the two to four years up to 10 years plus. So it looks like a majority of people on our call today are in that two to four years. And I love the, the people that are here that are new. You may be looking at college counseling or just started. So we're so glad to have you. And this is really pertinent to you because this is all new and, and this may even be overwhelming. So it can be overwhelming whether you've got 10 years plus or a year or less. The size of your entrepreneur, 76% of you are solopreneurs. So we are still very much that kind of uh, profession where we're all working our own. And you go back to what you were saying about, I mean, it's already a lonely profession anyway, because we've been working in our homes on our own. And then to add COVID on top of that, you know, it really has been very isolating. And, you know, we've suffered from some of the same things our students have. So, so being able to mitigate that has been good. So most of you are solopreneurs, people are starting to grow. And I'm seeing more and more companies add con um, virtual assistants and, you know, other team members. So that's exciting to see. How do you promote your business? So look at these numbers. By and large, word of mouth, referrals is our main bread and butter, right? But social media is growing. Networking is a big part of it. Website, mailing list, blogs, things like that. Notice how paid advertising is very small percentage. Some people do. I know people who do Google ads and Facebook ads and things like that, but that is not the the backbone for us building our business. But one of the things we're gonna talk about today is if you do wanna build your business and scale it, 
you have to go beyond that word of mouth. You have to go past that and, and find other avenues. So that's kind of where technology comes in, right, Katie? Yep, absolutely. And then when you're looking at technology, what drives your decision the most? It looks like features is the, um, the highest, ease of use is the second highest. So what we're gonna talk about today is what questions to ask, how do you compare? And this is one of those things that you need to know is like what's most important to you, price. But notice that's not the top thing. Access to training and support is really important as well. And then if you have other, put those, <laughs> Nagla says all of the above. All right, that's, that's uh, <laughs> I think we all feel that way. And, and there may be some other things too, that, that you, that are important to you, um, you know, the, the company's reputation, how long they've been around, you know, all those things all can come in. So um, what are your, what conclusions do you draw? What are your thoughts on seeing this, Katie? Um, well, I, I think um, none of it's all that surprising. This is kind of reflective of where I am with my own business as well. Um, I think that it's always interesting because uh, the paid advertising part, like my husband the other day, we were sitting at our exchange student soccer game and he said to me, why don't you have a banner out on the, on the football, you know, that we have on the fencing, they have, you know, all the companies, local companies put banners up. And I'm like, because no one reads them. <laughs> <laughs> it just becomes a blur of banners. And I, I, I mean, I want to support the school and I do that in different ways. Uh, uh, and I do that in a lot of different ways, but I just choose not to spend my money on, on advertising that, uh, so it's just funny how, um, you know, and Google ads, I've never, ever placed a Google ad. I just feel like the word of mouth thing has always, uh, has really been a, a primary, um, factor for me in, in promotion. Um, but having a website to back that up is critical because the first thing people do when they hear about you is they Google your name, <laughs> they yep. look you up. And if you don't have a website, that's a huge missed opportunity. So, um, yeah, we'll yeah, talk about that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's literally a red flag if they can't find you. Um, and that's where having a LinkedIn profile, because those are the two places they're going to look, right? Is your yep. website and LinkedIn. So, yeah. So, so we have to put these pieces all together. If somebody has done Google ads or things like that, go ahead and put something in the chat so other people can see what your experience and, and what that's like. So I'm going to stop sharing and let's go on and see um, what this all means to everyone. Okay. Uh, Cindy, do you want to take this one or do you want me to... Um, yeah, so, so one of the things, and I have an article that I'll post on my blog that will outline this in more detail, but as you're looking at, and we're leading up to this so far, is you know, tips for adopting or changing technology. First thing you want to do is identify your needs. You know, what is it that you want this technology to do? Because if you don't know what it is that you want it to do, then how are you going to know you found the right one? right? So identifying your needs is the most important thing. And then the second thing is prioritizing. Um, and because it's like colleges, no one software or product or tool is going to have everything that you want. You know, we all can create these pie in the sky um, scenarios and wish lists, but, but you have to prioritize and then explore the market. What's out there? But I want to caution people, and we'll talk about this a little bit more too. Don't try to do everything. Um, don't try and test 20 different ones. You know, kind of narrow your choices down, but explore what's out there and then vetting the providers. That's when you narrow it down to, you know, five, maybe three um, present and um, three um, providers. So then what you want to do before you get to that stage, though, in the prioritized stage is identify what your must haves. This product must do ABC. And again, it doesn't, it can be a calendar, it can be an app on your phone, it, it doesn't matter what it is, but you want to identify those must haves because then that becomes your list, that becomes the questions that you ask, that becomes, you know, what you search for on um, Google and referrals and you know what people think, what's nice to have, 
what don't you care? Sometimes there'll be lots of features and they're great. They're, they're wonderful, but you don't care. That's not part of what you need to do. And as you're doing this, think about scalability. Um, <clears throat> it may be enough for you now as a solopreneur, but if you add an administrative assistant, you add another consultant, if you add an essay coach, is it going to be scalable? So how much will it cost for you to add other accounts to this system, platform, whatever it is? So those are the things, but find out, make a list. And, and I have a comparison chart that you that I'll send, uh, that I'll have available and make a list. What's my must has? What's nice to have? This would be really nice. And, and what, what don't I care about? So those are the things you can look at for um, prioritizing. So... And so Great. then those become different drivers that everybody uses. So Katie, go for it. Okay. So um, on that, uh, for that subject, I thought the first thing that, you know, that both Cindy and I did for both of our businesses is to sort of just give you some context for where we are. Um, I, uh, I've been doing this since 2012. Um, I've had, I started out very slowly with just a handful of clients um, many of you who are new to this business, that's probably where you are. It might be one, it might be two um, or five or 10. Um, I now kind of, I, I've structured my business a little differently this past year. Um, you know, after my business partner, uh, David Steckel passed away uh, last January, I changed immediately, like on the spot, how I was working. And it's kind of interesting how much it's affected my, the technology choices I've made. So um, now the way I have it uh, structured, I have about 25 clients that I do comprehensive with, and that's, um, that's 10 per class. So I have about 10 seniors, 10 juniors, and I'm so far only five sophomores, but I'm, I'll max out at 10 sophomores as well, and maybe a few freshmen. Um, comprehensive for me includes the applications and the essays and all the traditional college counseling stuff, but I also... My business is primarily focused on athletic recruiting. And, you know, it used to be that about 50% of my students were athletes. And now my business is a lot more than that. Um, so, and then I have, when, when Dave passed, uh, I kind of opened up a new opportunity within my business, mostly to help out counselors who Dave was working with, or, you know, would kind of did the, just the athletic recruiting piece. So now I also do co-counseling where I work in partnership together with academic counselors. And I have about 45 kids that I'm doing this with right now across the country and some international kids as well. So it's really changed my needs because for those kids, I'm, I don't need to do all the college counseling stuff. I'm purely doing athletic recruiting. Um, I am a one woman show. I do everything myself. Um, and I'll be honest, it's, it's starting to come to that, that point where I need to make some choices about uh, if I bring somebody else into my business or I make some smarter technology choices that help to alleviate some of the workload that's really just administration for the most part. Um, but I do everything, sales, marketing, consulting, accounting, I'm doing it all. Um, I co like I mentioned, I co-counsel with other IECs and um, you know my business is uh, some regular students and mostly student athletes. Um, I pretty much try to avoid paper at all costs. Although you, if you saw my, my desk, I do still have more paper than I would like. So I'm really looking to go completely electronic as much as possible. And um, having a robust college counseling system that is essentially a CRM for college counselors is a very, very key component. But you'll see in, in the presentation we're going about to do that there's a lot of other stuff that goes around package packages that go around the outside of that to help drive the business. And again, for me, my biggest um, stopping point is all the administration that I have to do to just get someone set up and manage their account as I go along throughout the process. So um, that's, that's my business. And then Cindy's going to give you some perspective on hers. And, and I, the drivers for my decision making um, vary. I, as many of you know, I'm in a unique area. I live in Central California, so the families that I work with have, up until COVID, was all in person, and I work pretty regionally. 
Um, but in the past, I've had up to 55 seniors per year. Now I had a team of three people, um, but we have gone up to that. Currently, I have about 10 seniors. I've really reduced the number. Um, I still want to work with students, but at a much more reduced um, level. I use technology extensively. I try to use it in every way that I can because I want to spend my time with students not doing all the paperwork and all the background and all that stuff. So, but I do love to connect technologies. I want things to talk to each other and, and, and I want it to be easy. I don't, I don't want it to be complicated. So um, easy to use and affordable. So those are my drivers for decision-making in terms of technology. And I tell people probably the best $10 I spend every month is my calendar system because it <laughs> saves me so much time. I just send people a link, my students, everybody, and it just, it's just, it's just freed up my life so much. So it's amazing how one simple little thing can just transform everything that you do, right? Yeah. And I'll double down on that one because, because Cindy was, uh, I mean, there were a lot of people I saw using um, sort of online booking systems and I thought, okay, I need to jump on this because I am killing myself with the text messages and emails and phone calls about when we, when we can find a joint time on our calendar. I'm like, this is beyond stupid. I, <laughs> I waste my time with this. So yeah, double down on that one for sure. Um, okay. So now we're going to start talking about how do you audit your business? And this is just my approach. There is no one right or wrong way to do this. This was just, as I was kind of doing my own personal audit on my own business and trying to think about what I want to change in the future, these were, this is how I kind of, or my brain organizes my thoughts. So um, hopefully this get, provides you some good structure and um, allows you to do some similar analysis on your own, on your own, uh, you know, companies and, and how you're using technology. Um, and again, thinking about this from a technology perspective, meaning just the technology tools themselves, the automation, which is how much, how well can I actually use some of these tools to feed information into my college counseling software, primarily for me, but other systems as well that help make things so that I don't have to do the work, but the client or the prospect can actually enter things one time. And then it's just in there and I don't have to touch it. I just have to manage the workflow. Um, and then the scalability piece, which is, is really important in terms of um, thinking about growth for the future. There is nothing worse than investing in a bunch of tools and setting every, spending all the time and energy to set something up. And then a year from now, coming back to it and having to revamp everything. Um, that is a, a lot of wasted time on our part. So thinking about how scalable solutions are for growth in your future. Um, the primary areas we're gonna hit on right now are building your authentic brand, which again, this could be a presentation on its own, but really just talking about the technology tools around marketing and promotion. Um, prospect management, client management, and then the, the counseling process management. I will warn you, we're not going to talk about specific uh, brand you know, or uh, names of software components right now. I'm really just talking about the technology that enables this process to, to move forward. Um, okay, so first let's focus on building your authentic brand. Um, like I mentioned before, in my opinion, and again, some of you may not have websites, um, but having a website and having a profile on LinkedIn at a minimum is pretty key today. Um, again, someone hears about you word of mouth. The first thing they're going to do is Google your name and look you up and find your website. Um, the, the key components, if I break down the, the various tools that kind of help to feed leads or interest in your website and in your business, um, social media. I did not jump all over social media the first time that I could because I knew that if I did, it was going to um, require a lot of my time. And I did, and I have not yet hired a social media um, person. Uh, I've got a number of my friends though who have, and they're doing great things. I love watching all the stuff that they're doing to promote their businesses and to help educate their families on social media, um, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, you know, certainly TikTok is. Uh, you know, if you're reaching the, the teenage audience, uh, an interesting one. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of social media possibility there, but don't feel that, you know, if you're not super social media savvy or even tech savvy, don't feel that you have to. You really only want to engage in this sort of technology choices if you're comfortable with it, because otherwise it gets back to this authentic piece. It, if you're not 
authentic, if you're not doing it in a way that is true to who you are, it's not going to come off very well. So again, social media is one feeder into the website, which then feeds your, your, uh, you know, your, um, college counseling software in terms of the leads and the data that's in there. Okay. Email as well. I get a lot of email going back and forth with people who just contact me. A lot of that is driven by word of mouth. Um, again, I tried to, as much as I can feed them into a form where they, the, the prospect fills out a form and that data then, um, you know, feeds into my system. Um, blogging, vlogging, you know, blogs are like a video blog, essentially, um, Creating articles that help drive traffic to your website can help educate your audience. Um, I certainly, I, the number of times that I Google certain things that I'm interested in researching at the moment and come across another college counselor who's done a great job at building a, a history of, of articles. Again, this takes a lot of time. Um, you shouldn't jump into the blog thing unless you're ready to commit to spending a lot of time writing articles. But if you can do this effectively, it's a wonderful tool to help generate traffic and get interest in your business. Sending newsletters. Um, you know, Dave, <laughs> Dave my, my business partner, was a big believer in the, in the, the PDF uh, newsletter. Um, and so th that's another really great way to do this. And you can do those newsletters through email um, as well. Presentations, just getting out there and um, talking at high schools. You know, for me, uh, because a primary audience for me is our, our student athletes, um, talking to club sports programs, high school sports programs, um, being a part of panel discussions where you're one of the experts. Um, those are all both a, a combination of educating the public, educating your audience, as well as driving traffic into your website. But again, having the technology in place to take that information and do something with it is pretty critical. Um, and again, the, the last one is just building relationships. The, the word of mouth piece is important. And um, the networking, even with uh, our local IUCs, I find that, that my um, connections with all the counselors across the country who have been so supportive of me and who have needed help with their, their student athletes, um, this has been huge for me. And I all, every time I, I co-counsel together, I want to make sure that I am copying every time I meet with a family, I'm copying that, uh, that college counselor on the communication. So we're all staying up to, to speed on what's happening with a particular client. So having easy tools that allow me to keep those, you know, keep it all straight and, and do that are important. Important factors to consider here. Again, the size of your business now, what's your growth could look like in the future where you want to take it and your own level of technical skill for yourself as well as what you could potentially hire in if you wanted to spend money on hiring somebody to do some of these things. Um, okay, so now we're going to quickly touch on prospect management, which um, again, this is my thinking about how, uh, how I deal with a, a, a family who comes to me and says that they need help. Um, those leads typically, as I mentioned before, come to me in the form of a text, an email, a phone call, or just filling it, finding my website and filling out the form on my website. For the most part, I do my very, very best to tell people, go fill out the form on my website, because that puts you into my database, and that helps me drive the process forward and helps me track you a lot easier. If I have to go do all that work to put somebody in there, it's just... It's just a lot more work for me, <laughs> which I'm trying to avoid, um, mostly because I have to spend my time doing other things. So um, on the right side, I have sort of bits and pieces of sort of how that automation can happen. Again, I mentioned that I want that prospect to complete a form. And I also do my very, I, I rarely book an appointment for a prospect. I tell them, go, here's my, the link to my booking site. You need to go book an appointment with me when I have time available and I will block time on my calendar when I'm not available. Um, this has saved me so much time, I can't even tell you. So if you are not using an online booking tool, highly, highly suggest you look for them. Um, there's some great options out there. Um, okay, the next piece of that prospect management for me, and again, I realize that counselors do this many different ways. It could be just a, a phone call with a client to tell them how you work and find out a little bit about them. 
Um, I have found that doing a free 30 minute Zoom call, so I get to see their faces, they get to see me, we get to have a face-to-face -face conversation, that that has been a very uh, valuable tool for me to kind of let them know what, what I do and how I can help them and build trust with families. I find that my um, the number of families that then come back and hire me has gone way up. Um, so again, I prefer to do this on Zoom. Um, I do have a proper Zoom account and um, I just want to, uh, you know, there's, there's other products out there obviously, but I, I've just chosen to use Zoom. This could be phone and I certainly still do have things in person, um, uh, do meetings in person, but I try to uh, do as much as I can via Zoom. Um, the final piece of this prospect management is that after we finish that Zoom call, I will, the next step for me is to send them a contract. Um, I have two different types of contracts. Uh, one is a comprehensive contract and the other one is an athletic only contract where I'm primarily working together with another, partnering with another IEC. Um, contract management <laughs> is this crazy thing. You know, obviously the contract's in a PDF file. But now using the e-signature tools, either in Adobe or through other websites, um, it's so much easier to send them a contract and they can do an e-signature by just typing their name. It puts the e-signature in, it's official, it gets emailed back to you. It's so much easier to manage. In fact, I just, I, I haven't been using this yet, but this is one of the things I will be implementing in my future. Again, just to make things as easy as I can. Right now, the college counseling software tools, um, you know, don't have this piece in it that I've seen. Um, and this is something that I think we all, many of us have contracts. So that's a piece that I would like to um, make sure that, you know, could be, could be in integrated into this um, for the future. It'd be great. Um, okay, the next part of this is client management. Um, I've sort of divided up the administrative part of this from the actual college counseling piece. So once a family signs a contract and sends it back to me, um, the, I, I have to do some work to set them up in all my various systems. I, um, I set up a, a Google Drive account. I put a document in there that they're going to fill out when we do a, an initial meeting. I set up their billing. I make sure that they are all family members, the, the mom, the dad, or you know, parent one, parent two, the student. Um, that they're all in my Google contacts because when they then call me or text me, I want to know who they, you know, who they are. I mean, I don't want it to come through as a, a just a regular phone number on my phone. Um, yeah, I set up their invoicing and I, I use QuickBooks. So uh, QuickBooks online. So, you know, setting up that invoicing and I, depending on which contract they're on, I've got different types of how I set that invoicing up. Um, in terms of um, once a year sort of invoicing or more frequent hourly or, you know, other types of invoicing. Um, so there's, there's a fair amount of time that I spend just getting these things done. And there's a lot of steps in between. So the more, and again, these are not things that are easily integrated right now into college counseling tools, but these are the things that I really want to see as potential automation options in the future. Um, and again, the booking tool, getting them all to, to book the meeting with me that automatically generates the Zoom link and sends reminders and all that kind of stuff. That's, those are important. Um, right now, you know, the tools I'm using um, do that, but um, I just, whatever, whatever college counseling software I use in the future needs to, um, or I don't know that it will I have it right away, but I hope that these are the things that are, that are you know, considered. Um, and then there's the intake, um, my, my initial meeting that I do again via Zoom, where I have them fill out. I choose to do this through a form rather than a survey, only because I that I um, I like the format better. Um, but I do most of my work is through Google Google Drive, um, and uh, that mostly because the kids are all on Google for for school. So that's just my my choice there. Okay. And then um, counseling process management. And this is where we get into the guts of what a college counseling software package um, man, helps you manage. Um, and this is where I kind of want to stay fairly high level because I know that Cindy, one of the things you're going to be doing in the future is to talk through um, this in a little more detail. So I just really, for the purpose of, of um, 
talking about the technology, how this integrates with technology. Obviously, there's all in any of these packages, there's, there's sort of an administrative layer where you've got you know, email, appointments, reminders, summaries of your meetings, to-do lists, that kind of thing, task management. Um, there's always a section of you know, inputs to the system, right? You've got um, gathering information about student background, potential you know, surveys that you're giving them, their high school transcript, the test scores, the if you've given them any sort of major career assessments, financial assessments for the family, college preferences, you know, whatever you've taken in from that student, um, storing that in a place or places, uh, depending on how the software manages that information, um, that's all the input piece. Then there's the college research piece where there's, you know, there's going to be teaching these kids how to search um, for colleges. And I find that a lot of, you know, some of these things, I would really like, um, you know, I found that more and more, I'd like to use some short videos to help build a curriculum around how to do some of these things. Because I feel like if kids can watch a video and then have a meeting with me and already be somewhat familiar with what I'm gonna ask them to do, but then I can repeat a lot of what's being told to them in that video, it's just another, you know, another way to get the message through um, in a fairly efficient way. So college search, list building, evaluating, uh, you know, the college fit, being able to kind of put some labels on that. Um, and helping them prioritize and assign their admissions expectations. And then obviously the application management piece of this is really huge. Um, you know, whatever, um, what all the different various pieces that go into um, creating a, um, an easy to use, um, manageable uh, list of uh, all the tasks that have to be completed in order to manage uh, the, the college application process. Um, it's, this is a big deal. Um, this is where I feel like a lot of us either love the tool we're using or, uh, want, you know, have found that we do, you know, have gone outside of the system or used spreadsheets or done whatever. So, um, these are the, this is, these are the kind of things you need to ask yourself as you get into this process of, of evaluating your technology choices and, and know, you know, think about how you like to work because, like Cindy said, there's no one perfect way, uh, no one perfect software package that's going to do everything just the way you like to do it. Um, in many cases, you'll end up using 75% of the features that a, a software package offers, but then you choose not to use the other 25% because it just doesn't operate the way you need to operate. Um, you know, again, like in my own business, things have changed pretty dramatically. And I found that um, some of the things I was doing before aren't really working for me anymore. So I'm having to shift gears. So I'm looking for that next software choice, especially with college counseling software to um, handle, a, a handle my workload in a slightly different way than I did before. Um, Cindy, do you have anything you wanna to add to this? Um, no, I think that there's been a lot of discussion in the chat and, you know, just looking at, you know, I think emphasizing going back to what you said and what you have on the screen is how you like to work. That is the key thing is we all work differently. We, and, and it goes back to two at the very beginning is what are your priorities? You know, what are your must haves? Cause your must haves are gonna be different from mine and from Karen or other people. So that's the key thing and, um, you know, keeping it simple. The other thing I would rec uh, recommend and I've run into this for many years is sometimes we have a way we do things and we want it to be exactly that way when we adopt the new technology. So you have to be willing to think outside the box a little bit and be able to um, be open to new ways of doing things. Because a lot of times like, here's how I do it on paper and pencil, and this is how I'm gonna do it here. Here's how I do it in this software. Now I'm gonna do the, the I wanna do the exact same thing. And it, it, it doesn't correspond or correlate from A to B. You know, you have to be open to think about new ways. And that's where the training and support videos, things like that, those are really good questions to ask because that's how you're going to learn and how you're going to, and the thing about, especially in counseling, our process, it's not just us using it, right? Our students are using it. The parents are using it. 
Um, parents should have separate logins. I, that's a must have for me. I'm not gonna use the software where my students have to log, my parents log in using the students um, username and password. That's not secure. It's not, a, so, so different things are important. Um, but yeah, so, so keeping, keeping, it's like our core values, you know, what are the things that you really need to have? And um, so, yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, oh, I, I forgot about this slide. So I just quickly was going to run through the list of software tools I've chosen to use. And this is kind of where I am right now, but I'm already thinking about things that I'm going to change for the future. So my email package right now, I've got Gmail. Um, my calendar is Google Calendar. I tried to stick with Google as much as I could, just because I think at the time that I made those choices, it made sense for me. Um, right now I'm using an online booking system called You Can Book Me, um, but I, I may need to switch over to Calendly depending on kind of what my next technology <laughs> choices look like. Calendly tends to be a little more, um, popular here in the United States. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, virtual meetings, again, I've chosen Zoom, accounting, QuickBooks Online. For those of you who still may be doing some driving, I don't know who out there is doing any sort of driving, but in case you didn't know it, uh, the um, QuickBooks Online has a an app on your phone that can track your mileage, <laughs> which is kind of so nice cool. for those of you. You don't have to remember what the mileage is on your odometer and put it down at the beginning and put it down at the end. like. Yep. That it's auto generated for GPS. It literally like you hit, okay, I'm driving now. And then you turn it off and it, <laughs> it tracks it automatically. It's awesome. And then it goes straight into when you're doing your, your uh, taxes and you're, you know, pulling together all your reports on, you know, how you've, uh, you know, all the driving you've done, which I haven't done much <laughs> the last year. Um, website wise, I, um, right now I'm using Weebly, but I'm going to probably be switching out everything over to Wix.com. Um, super easy tool to use, um, very drag and drop. You know, most, most website design tools today are pretty drag and drop and easy to use. All the graphics, I didn't put this on here, but Canva, if you guys aren't using Canva, you need to use Canva. It's like, you mm -hmm. know, no brainer. Um, social media right now, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn are really the tools that I tend to, um, to use. Um, but I don't, I have not gone hardcore with my social media. And that is one area where I could pick things up in the future. Um, so I need to make some decisions about that. Like, but like I said, be careful about when you commit to doing some of these things, because you don't want to do them halfway. You want to do them well, and you want to be consistent with it. And if you're not ready to make that commitment, then I would choose not to <laughs> and be good, be really good at what you do and make sure that the technology choices you make fit with again, your authentic, what, you know, what you can really provide and college counseling software. Um, I've been a guided path user for many years. I, in the way past I had used college planner pro. Um, but again, those options are open for the future. Um, you know, my learning is, is getting ready to announce, but, um, there's, there's other options out there as well, that I've been monitoring for years. So, um, I'm kind of at this point, pretty open-minded and I'm really just looking for what package can help me make that next choice to manage my business the way it's going to look next year. Um, so that's it for me, Cindy. Yeah, that's, that sounds, and, and I'm Katie, I love how everybody's been sharing and people have been adding in different tools and things that they use. And so let's, let's hit a couple of questions here, but I do want to draw attention, go back to your previous slide. Katie, oh. Oh, um, just those are our emails. No, go just to the emails. So okay. um, you can reach Katie at katie.anderson at collegefitoc.com and also Cindy at cindymcdonald.com. This is recorded as a podcast. So I want to spell this out so that people can, who are listening to us can also reach out and Remember, my name is spelled with two Y's. It's C-Y-N-D-Y. If you put C-I-N-D-Y, it'll never get to me. So 
Um, so we love hearing from you if you have other questions and things. Um, also, I'll put my, my, my You Can Book Me link up there. I'll put it in the chat. And if anybody wants to schedule a, you know, a call, a 30-minute call or something to talk about technology, I'm more than happy to, to do that. So um, let's go to questions. And you can go ahead and take the slides down. And um, I'm going to stop and, sharing. Yeah, stop sharing. There we go. All right. Yeah. So, um, but it's been great. The, the chats have been very, lots of people have been doing lots of chats. I will take the text from the chats and I'm going to the tools and the recommendations and some of those things that have been shared in the chat, I'll include in my blog. So you will all get a copy. You'll get a link to this recording and to the blog that I'll post. Um, it should be up by Monday so that you can come back to all of this. And I can tell Katie, this is a topic that a lot of people are very interested in. And as you said, we're gonna, this is January, I'm gonna talk about technology. Um, I've already started a comparison on calendar tools. People have asked about that. And you know, looking at other tools that you may use, CRMs, college planning, you know, just all you know, note taking. I mean, there's just so many ways that we can offer this. So, um, so let's hit some of the questions, and then I do have a couple of announcements um, that I want to make, and let you guys know what the next Friday forum is going to be. So, um, Katie, or let's, can you see the questions? I can. Um... Okay, so let's start with pennies. So what are all the technology options for IC? So you're talking about college planning tools. So you mentioned College Planner Pro and Guided Path, which is going to become Maya Learning. There's also Council More, which um, is also a very popular, well-known product. 360 Planner is another one. We also have one that I often think people don't think about from an overall planning perspective, but it's, it can be very helpful, is um, All College Essays by Rebecca Joseph. And so she's got an app and it, if you just want the essays or you know some deadlines, I think it, will be, it includes all those deadlines. Uh, that's another one to look at. But those are the, there are about five main ones. Um, when we started Guided Path, there were, nobody else was doing online college planning. So Guided Path broke the, the um, ground for that. And now there are lots of really great tools out there. So hopefully um, that Cindy, answers your question. Go ahead. I wanted to add real fast. So one thing that I'm finding, and I'm sure most of you out there are seeing this, is that because many high schools, both public and private, not just the private schools anymore, um, have invested in systems like Naviance and Score and you know other my learning and and others. Um, it's it's kind of somewhat of a challenge <laughs> in that we're you know as as college counselors we are um, are doing our best to kind of manage their help these kids manage their lists and understand what to do. But but also as a as somebody who's um, counseling kids at these schools, you also need to start to become a little familiar with. You know, I often have kids share their screen when we're on a Zoom call so I can see what they need to do on their side, because many of the, the high schools will require them to put in a request on Naviance to get a letter of recommendation from their teachers. And the systems are all built into the Common App. So, um, you know, it's interesting how much technology has changed the way that we're working. So um, just realize that just because you make some of these technology choices for yourself, you still need to be open to getting to know some of these other options that are out there because your kids are having to use them for school. And that's one of the points that Elaine brings up um, is that the challenge of getting students to use your software, whatever it is, when they're having to use SCORE or Naviance or Maya Learning or something else at school, you know, they don't want to have to use two. But my answer for that is, they're using technology all the time. They're logging into stuff. How many apps do they have on their phones? And so the fact that you have them log into something else should not be a deterrent for them, but not, not requiring them to only use one. I mean, yeah, because they're going to have those at their schools. And so having a tool and 
and just encouraging students when you when they log in and they see you they're going to model what you do so so there are lots of tips and that's a whole nother session we can do on how do you get kids to use your software no matter what it is so, um so that's so katie there's a lot of questions and when we'll end with these and any other ones that we didn't get to we can send out as um emails but people are asking about your athletics and how you do that so um you know how do you do the pure athletic piece um, and that kind of thing. So, okay. So I had somebody, uh, just, uh, you know, you can always email me at katie.andersen, just like Cindy is two wise. I'm S E N on Andersen <laughs> <laughs> at collegefitoc.com. Um, I have a co-counseling contract that I created that basically, um, I just do the athletic piece. So I do an intake meeting, an hour and a half, uh, intake meeting with a family, which the counselor can be absolutely be a part of if they want. In fact, we can do them. If you're just starting with a family, we could all do that one meeting together and get it all done at once because it combines both athletics and academics. But then I basically take that. I give them a, a, a student athlete profile. I give them an email, uh, template, and I make a recruiting list, which is much deeper than a regular um, than a regular uh, college list. It's it's probably seventy schools deep, but it really focuses in on the right athletic recruiting fit. And so I try to make it easy so that I kind of stay in my lane on the athletic recruiting piece, and the counselor can then handle all the rest of the academic stuff. And then we work in tandem from a communications and making sure that we're on the same page, you know, that we're recommending the same kinds of schools and that kind of thing. So if you're interested, just email me. I'd be happy to forward you more information. Great. Great. Well, we are quickly running out of time. So Katie, thank you so much. And everybody, thank you. Happy 2022. There's so many opportunities. Um, this topic of technology and, you know, what are building your business as, as I've been talking to a lot of consultants, I realized that people do want help auditing and analysis on their business. So I am actually offering that as a coaching service. I've already started with a couple of people. And so if that's something you're interested in, you want some help. I mean, people have Mark mentioned how it's hard to change technology, which is absolutely true because if you've got data and, and historical things, how do you do that? But I am doing um, analysis and audits. So, you know, send me an email and I'll hop on a call with you. I'm also offered some workshops and I offered one this week. The, I have one next week is already full. I've offered one on the 19th. It's almost full. And so I'll do a third one on the 24th. So if you're interested in that, just drop me a line and I'll, and, and I'll be sending emails out. But I'm only doing 10 people at a time. So the week, and it's a three hour workshop. So we can talk about what, how did your last year go and what do you want to do in the next year? So these are three hour workshops. They're $145, which is a very um, inexpensive price. And, you know, we've had a great, so far I've had a great time and they filled up like that. So don't, if there's something you're interested in, don't hesitate because I've already got the 19th almost full and I haven't even, I haven't even sent an email out about it. So, um, so let me know if you're interested and if there's enough need, I'll, I'll put another one in February, but only 10 people. So I'm going to be back in two weeks, and we're going to be talking about professional organizations. Julia Varielli, who was on the call here, she's going to join me and a couple other people talking about just professional development and what you should be doing to keep that up, too. So, everyone, thank you very much. Katie, thank you. Thank you. It's just always a pleasure, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. It's um, in January and everyone else. I'm so glad to have you here. I just really revel in everybody's support and um, appreciate it. And we'll see you in two weeks. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you, Cindy. I always All appreciate right. being invited to do these things. <laughs> All right, everybody take care. We'll see you in a couple of weeks.